Hello, my name is Princella, the queen maker of the High Power Podcast, and I'm out here with yours truly, Rabbi Manis Friedman. And this is going to be a wonderful conversation, and I'm looking forward to sharing this with you. How are you today? Great. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> looking forward to this conversation because it is nothing short of life-saving. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I have a purpose on the planet to uh, awaken the masses. And um, I'm really in tune with the problems of the world. And I think that the number one issue in the world is ignorance. And I do believe with more knowledge, there is more power in the hands of the right people. And without a stable individual, there is no stable society. And I think this is really important for all of our survival, not just humans, but the planet in and of itself, you know, the plants, animals, water, because our ignorance in humanity is affecting all life. Would you agree? For sure. I don't think we're more evil than ever, right? but we are totally confused more than That's ever. Correct. So it's the confusion is just horrible. Yes, yes. And dangerous. Yes, very dangerous, right? And uh, so I wanted to bring this conversation to light because I've been running my channel for about two years now. And recently, maybe about a month ago, someone sent me your content and you had a uh, episode, What Scares Men? And people were so excited to give that to me because the things that you were saying in that episode is exactly my teachings to women. And I think it's critical that women really realize their value add to society and their contribution, as well as knowing the nature of men. I think women's confusion on who men are, how men operate, has also contributed to a lot of the dysfunction on the planet. And uh, I would like to know what you would say about that. See, it started off with confusion about God. Mm -hmm. That became confusion about religion, mm -hmm. which turned into confusion about policy, politics, mm -hmm. leadership. Yes. It kept on deteriorating until we've reached the bottom of the barrel. Mm -hmm. We're confused about gender. Correct. And now you can't function, you can't live, you can't, nothing. Right. <laughs> we're, we're wiped out. <laughs> yes. Yes. And, and you would think that it couldn't get any crazier. I'm afraid to say that. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. <laughs> you don't know. Crazy is infinite. Right. It is. Just right. like everything else in right. the universe. Logic is finite. Right. You make sense. You make sense. It's right. It. But crazy can just go, I don't know. <laughs> but, but life cannot be sustained this way. Correct. Life is not infinite. Right. You either do it correctly or you kill yourself. Right. And I think we are at that point, yeah. right? Um, we have on both sides of the equation because the principle, the the number one principle in this plan on this planet that we're really, really having difficulties with, is the principle of gender, masculine and feminine, and this idea of roles, and the destruction of the world. Each party thinks that they're the only ones that are suffering. Um, the male thinks that. It's chaos in his world and the woman is benefiting. She thinks there's chaos in her world and the man is benefiting. When in reality, they're both suffering extensively. They're, it's, it's traumatic on both sides. And so I want to kind of get down into one of the, the things that really just sent up antennas, which was coming from you. Because coming from a woman, it just sounds like, I'm just anti the world. I'm an extremist and um, I'm just anti man or anti woman. That's the way it appears to be. But what the people don't realize is that it took extreme measures to get us here. And the extremity to what has taken place has taken us so far away from the truth that the truth sounds extreme at this point. And there was something that you said in your show that was sent to me, um, that men and women together just causes chaos, right? It's complete dysfunction, and men and women will never truly understand each other 
uh, because of the massive differences just in psychology. And that raised some red flags for the, your audience, but it reverberated a sentiment in my audience that, oh my God, this is coming from a rabbi saying the same thing that Priscilla is saying. Can you give me some insight as to why you told your audience that and uh, the premise behind uh, the chaotic uh, nature between men and women being in the same environment. Before we get to that, yes. part of the problem is people don't have opinions anymore. Right. They just take sides. Correct. So the only thing they'll hear is, oh, so you're on that side? Yes. So you're, you're, you're for the men. Yeah, you're for the women. Right. You're for the... There's no thought behind it. It's just safety in numbers. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, who, who's more popular right now? That's who I go with. Right. That's very sad. It is sad. So the idea that men and women are not good for each other, mm -hmm. I think is so, so much a matter, a fact of life. Yes. That in a moment of honesty, everyone will admit it. Mm -hmm. I was speaking to a high school mm -hmm. in Minnesota, about 200 kids in an auditorium. And I said, you know, this dating thing is really, really nasty. Mm -hmm. You know, there are the, those who make it and there are those who don't. Mm -hmm. and, and there's heartbreak and, there, and there's trauma and there's, it's, it's a mess. It's a horrible thing. Yes. And the pressure is like, oh, you don't have a boyfriend? You don't have a girlfriend? You have no date? You know? I said, I suggest an interesting pro uh, experiment. Mm -hmm. A moratorium, no dating, no socializing. Men and boys and girls separate. Go your own way. Live by. Uh, who agrees to that? Nobody did. Boo, right. boo, boo. No, nobody agrees to it. Right. After the class was over and I'm kind of talking to the students individually, mm -hmm. every one of them said, I think, I think it's a good idea, but nobody else will. Right, right. So that group mentality distorts everything. But individually, even teenagers need a relief from these social pressures. Correct. So a, a teenage girl who has a boy in her life, mm -hmm. her femininity is messed up. Correct. What is it? Girl interrupted. Yes, she's like, yes. She's not going to grow up to be what she's supposed to be because she's already compromising. Correct. And the boy mm -hmm. will never, never get to be a man. Correct. Because he's trying to accommodate feminine energy and he's not even a man yet correct that's why god invented marriage mm -hmm, mm -hmm. marriage is where the man becomes a husband mm -hmm. and the woman becomes a wife mm -hmm. now they need each other right. now they're not better off without each other mm -hmm. but as a man and a woman you're better off without each other correct and um this is, a, this is definitely something that I share with the audience because in relationships, relationships are based on need. And when you put a person in a needy situation, they end up compromising themselves and they start to look outside of themselves for other people to fulfill these voids, which keeps, the, which keeps both individuals incomplete where they start to drain the, the life out of each other with expectations. Well, we're supposed to do this because we're in a relationship. This is what you're supposed to do. And in that instance, it forces people into an unnatural situation. And when it comes to marriage or just relationships in general, specifically dealing with the male, there's a reason why the male functions the way he functions. And no amount of medical interventions is going to change that. Uh, and it, it is due to the universal principles of how masculine energy functions and how feminine energy functions. And the male's brain wiring is drastically different from women's. And which, you know? Yes, I definitely do know. Pray tell. Yes, okay. So what appears to be impediments for the male is based on a social expectation. Men are being judged on the rubric of a woman because women are naturally social. 
the male is naturally antisocial for reasons of survival. Um, this is coded into his biology simply because men are to compete with each other to gain access to women. This is just the hard wiring of the male nature, which means there are certain aspects about him that are turned down, whereas women have certain aspects about them that are turned up due to them needing to take care of the children and create a village for support within them. That's not necessarily how the male operates. The male operates naturally in a dominance hierarchical um, way. Because of that, it makes the male's life very difficult because he has codependent ways that he needs to come out of before he can actually stand on his own. In modern marriage today, men have been handicapped, never having to actually stand on their own. They have been told to seek a woman and their expectations of the woman is to take care of all of these things that he can't perform on his own. So with the draft, there used to be the draft. So the military would take them in and they would take care of them. You know, I was in the military and the, the way of life of the military, don't think, just do what we say, follow orders. We give you three hots in the cot and that's it. So that's a form of being taken care of, never actually utilizing your own mental faculties and your own discipline to lead your own life. Outside of that, before he gets there, his mother took care of him, right? And the rules of society is place all of that pressure on the girl, cook for your brother, clean up, let him play video games or whatever. That's how this society is being run. Once he gets out of that, into the military or into the workforce where you know, jobs are given to him, duties are given to him, responsibilities are given to him through that mechanism. Then he has a wife to pretty much take care of everything else. So he's not really been able to stand on his own and to truly become a man. So it's, it's handicapped him so greatly that where we are now, it appears that society is pulling the rug from under men. Um, and women have a change in thought of how they should interact with men, which is leaving men in a very um, peculiar situation where they are panicking and not knowing how to stand on their own because they never did stand on their own. And I think that is a result of their brain wiring because the male has always been given a duty by society go to war. That'll teach you to be a man. Um, create a family and be responsible for that family. That'll teach you to be a man. Um, but he's never had an internal compass to say, this is my value add to society. This is what I'm supposed to do. They're looking externally for that. Women don't do that. We're like kind of hardwired to know what our responsibilities are. And we always look for a public service ad. The male is not like that. And if you don't guide him, he's lost. And that, that difference is what creates a lot of the chaos, even in relationships. Because if the man can't uphold the social expectations, even though he also has to control the sexual urges and all of the thoughts that are going through his head due to the flood of external stimuli. With having to do all of that and failing at societal expectations, the male is crumbling emotionally um, and the woman doesn't really understand why. And because she doesn't understand why, she's unconsciously putting extra pressure on him to perform in a way that he really can't. And oh, is that what it means? It's not good for man to be alone. Yes, yes. Yeah, but let's let's back up a little bit. Sure. This is what went wrong mm -hmm. for men. Mm -hmm. What would be the right thing? In other words, what is a man before you mess him up? <laughs> He's just a male. Before Which you... is what? Mm -hmm. Which is <laughs> what I... would a man be if no one messed him up? What would a man be? He would just be a wandering. Um, a wandering phallus looking for a uh, an external vessel to uh, 
transfer his genes into and just try to figure out like either he's going to do that and perish or just try to survive. And that's just what he is until you put him in society and say, nope, you can't be that. <laughs> It doesn't give men a very good starting point. It doesn't, but it, that's the, the basis of all life begins with the biological code or, you know, um, uh, the five characteristics of life. We all follow it. So um, the male has to be trained to be social or to function in society. Well, yeah, we all yeah. have to be trained. Yes. But what are we starting with? What gifts do men start with and what gifts do women Excuse me. Well, bring to the picture? Well, Everybody has different gifts. Um, if we're talking about just on the biological level, there is no gift outside of biology if we're just speaking of uh, procreation. But then when you get to the spirit level, though, that's where the gifts are here. And we are creators. We have things that we do, whether it's drawing, singing, painting, music, all of the art forms are gifts to this world that unfortunately we haven't been allowed to keep amongst ourselves and share amongst the community those have been capitalized on by uh external you know entities but that's another topic for a conversation because but the fact of the matter is is that we all have natural gifts that we can add to society the problem for males is is that their biological need overshadows the gifts that they could have. And so instead of transferring that energy into an external purpose, whether it be through arts or some creative effort, they're wasting it on coping mechanisms, right? They're wasting all of their energy through the desire for sex, which makes it really hard for men because of that. It's always that competition between men naturally that takes them off of a higher purpose. It's not that they don't have gifts, because we all do. It's just that they don't know where their ad is. Let's try another approach. Sure. Yeah. All right. So new approach. Okay. Well, let's figure this out. Okay. So I'm not blocking my thinking. Thinking. All right. <laughs> all right. What's the new approach, Rabbi? God is creating the world. On Sunday, he created light. On Monday, you know, right, right. Mm -hmm. And then on Friday, he creates the first human being mm -hmm. and says, not enough to have man alone. Mm -hmm. I'm going to create a woman, too. Okay. Why did he have to say that? Just create what you need to create. Create, right. You're on a roll. Go right. ahead. Yes. <laughs> You're doing great. Yes. Why do you have to stop and say, hmm, not good for man to be alone. I'll create a woman. Just go ahead and create a woman. Correct. Mm -hmm. Here's a difference between the male and the female mm -hmm. functions, energies. Mm -hmm. Everything God created up to man and including man mm -hmm. is raw material with great potential. God said, you know, that's not good enough. Mm -hmm. Now I got to create something that is what it's supposed to be, not only a potential. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to create a woman. Mm -hmm. So the difference between the man and the woman is the man has potential to be. Mm -hmm. The woman is. Correct. So the man has this deep uh, pressure to accomplish because he's not what he's supposed to be by nature. Right. By creation. Mm -hmm. So he has to achieve. He has to accomplish. He has to fix something, acquire something that he doesn't have. Mm -hmm. The woman, on the other hand, is perfectly content with who she is, mm -hmm. but wants to nurture others. Mm -hmm. So she doesn't have that intense what? fear of maybe not accomplishing and being a zero. Correct. You can go, as a woman, you can go from a one to a ten. Mm -hmm. There's no zero. Right. Because I am what I'm supposed to be. Right. Now the question is, how much can I nurture mm -hmm. in others? In some way, it turns out men thrive on fixing what is wrong. Mm -hmm. Women thrive on nurturing what is good. Correct. Here's when men and women hang around together too much, mm -hmm. like a totally co-ed society. Correct. 
men develop a need to receive, to be nurtured, and women develop this feeling of responsibility to change things, right. to fix what's wrong. Right. And we're both frustrated. Right. And it's not working. It's not working. Even intimacy, even the sexual drive, it's all constructive. A man feels that he needs to procreate right. to make life. Correct. Then he's accomplished something. Mm -hmm. Uh, the woman feels, life is great, let me nurture it. Right. And even biologically, that, that's the truth. That's the truth, yes. The uterus doesn't go looking, right? but whatever comes to the uterus it will nurtures. blossom, mm -hmm. come alive, yes. will be nurtured. So men are the providers, women are the nurturers. Mm -hmm. A man can bring home wheat. Mm -hmm. It's not bread. <laughs> you can't eat wheat. Mm -hmm. So when men start feeling like they should be receiving pleasure right. instead of giving pleasure, mm -hmm. they're emasculated. Mm -hmm. When a woman feels she has to fix everything that's wrong, I don't know what the, what the equivalent for emasculated <laughs> in women... I don't. I don't think there's actually a word for it. But, but it's frustration. It's, frust it's frustration for sure. So, in a marriage, mm -hmm. the man is the provider, the protector, bring home what isn't in the home. Mm -hmm. The woman, on the other hand, is anything good, I'll make it better. Mm -hmm. So women are content when things are good. Men are bored when things are good because there's nothing to fix. Mm -hmm. And that is that is a result of the electrical current that is to continue moving because that is the that is the principle of masculine energy. Masculine energy is a moving. That's what energy. we were created for. Right. Men were created to become something. Mm -hmm. Women were created to, to make something. other things become. Mm -hmm. And so. so what I would like to say in terms of uh, the giving, I don't think it's natural in men to give. I think they have to be trained and taught that they have to give um, because it's a part of discipline. I think men are fire and I think fire is a good thing. Fire gives, fire provides heat. You can cook with fire, but fire can also get out of control. And burn things down. Right. right. <laughs> and I think that. So God says to men, yes. fix the world. <laughs> Excuse me, you're not fixing, you're breaking. Right. <laughs> but the drive, mm -hmm. the natural drive is I must show something, accomplish something. Mm -hmm. And so this guy says, when I was young, I was determined to be the best at everything. Mm -hmm. I got a little older and a little more realistic, and I thought, you know, maybe I'll just be the best at something. Yes. And then I got a little older and wiser. Right. And I thought maybe I could be good at something. Right. Not the best. Right. And now, as I'm getting really old, if my wife writes on my tombstone, he was okay, I'll settle for that. <laughs> yes. I'll settle for okay. Yes. Of course, we can use the drive to accomplish mm -hmm. in a destructive way. Yes. Mm hmm and that's why we need the woman mm -hmm. to kind of give our creative abilities mm -hmm. a structure. Mm -hmm. And here comes the challenging part, is that there is a natural tendency for the male to not respect or desire to listen to women. Men only respect other men, and they only value the opinions of other men. And so there has to be something that is developed in the male that would make him um, okay with listening to a woman. And so even... It's called marriage. <laughs> and, it's even, called marriage. <laughs> and even then, he won't. And, right? <laughs> even then, he won't because the woman in the marriage ends up taking a lot of the burden because I don't think 
men are men have to earn they they have to earn everything and women have not been really made aware of the nature of men having to earn so women have been giving men access without him earning the the right to say that i belong here because you have to prove yourself to be capable a lot of incapable men are getting into relationships with women and this behavior of expecting the woman to do everything where the man is crumbling and just riding along on his coattail on her coattail that has become the norm and women are confused about why that's happening and they're no it's like they give 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 and the man just takes 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 and never reciprocates it's when she gets sick he leaves if uh, he gets sick, she's there taking care of. She's actually doing the providing and protecting because provision and protection comes naturally to a woman. Doesn't Otherwise it? known as nurturing. Right. Yes, yes. Nurturing is providing and protecting. The man, because he's fearful by nature, he lives in a fear. Fear in itself, in and of itself, is destructive. And fear and scarcity is connected with each other and a scarce mind is always going to operate in hoarding it's going to operate in competition it's going to operate in these lower vibrational things that are truly destructive to self and others and it's really difficult to get the man into a mind that there is abundance because there's something in his mind that's always saying scarce, 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 fear, 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 fear. destruct, instruct, destruction. Well, the fear, again, the fear is yeah. I may not amount to anything. Right. And that's why um, the worst thing a, w a wife can say to her husband is, never mind, I'll do it myself. Mm -hmm. I'll do it myself means I don't need you. That's right. Yeah. You're not, a, you're not a amounting to anything. Mm -hmm. And that's why any criticism, any criticism hurts a man mm -hmm. more than a woman. Mm -hmm. Because he already suspects, maybe I, maybe I haven't amounted to anything. Some of the most powerful, richest, most influential men in history were totally paranoid. Yes. Because maybe after all of this, I'm still nothing. I'm still nothing. Mm -hmm. Women don't have that. No, we don't. There is no zero mm -hmm. in a woman's psyche. No, it, there's it's infinity in our mind. The, the worst fear that a woman would have is being like a man, <laughs> not being appreciated. Mm -hmm. After all I do, no one appreciates. Mm -hmm. Whereas men mm -hmm. need compliments, women need appreciation. Mm -hmm. Don't tell me I'm good. I know that. Right. But don't take me for granted. Right. So here's, here's the funny thing. A man will take any compliment mm -hmm. as dumb, as <laughs> ridiculous, as, and he'll even say it. Oh, that's a stupid compliment. Yeah. But it worked. Yes. It, it makes him feel great. Yes. A woman says to her husband, you changed the light bulb? Mm -hmm. I, I didn't know you could. And he's like, oh, come on. Right. Anyone can change a light bulb, but he feels great. Mm -hmm. Why? He's not zero. Right. He changed a light bulb. Yes. And and but imagine if the if the husband wants to return the compliment, and the next day at breakfast he says, "You you made the omelet? I I didn't know you. It doesn't work. <laughs> it doesn't work the same. <laughs> She'll never give him eggs again. Right? <laughs> what kind of dumb statement was that? You know what's funny is that uh, Gary Chapman, he's the author of a book called The Five Love Languages. And what I've told my audience is you'll find that the man's love language is typically words of affirmation. They need somebody to tell them that they're great. And um, that's, unfortunately, that's a bad thing. Because in order to become a whole, stable individual, you have to draw from within and not seek from without. And men are constantly seeking external validation for their existence, which results in codependency. So the male is codependent by nature. And what happens because of that codependency, they look for relationships where they are needed. 
And when two people need each other as opposed to want each other, it creates an imbalance where people are drawing from the energetic resources of the other person. The further down that the man is and empty on the inside where he can't draw, the more energy he ends up pulling from the woman, which depletes her. Again, let's put that in a different if we don't need each other, mm -hmm. we will never bond. Mm -hmm. Wanting each other is greedy. So we do need each other, but not for the same thing. Because if we need the same thing, we're just going to fight over it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so a man does need something from a wife. Otherwise, mm -hmm. they wouldn't be together. What does he need? He needs to know that what he gave was accepted. Mm -hmm. Like a teacher, mm -hmm. a good teacher. Mm -hmm. He teaches and teaches and teaches. And... Did it make a difference? Did I accomplish anything? Did you get anything from what I gave you? Or you weren't even listening? <laughs> Which would be the worst. Mm -hmm. Like a comedian and nobody laughs. Mm -hmm. like, it's like... So what does the comedian need? And he desperately needs it. Mm -hmm. He needs to know that you got the joke. Right. <laughs> So it's not that he needs to know that he's great. Mm -hmm. He needs to know that his efforts were effective. Mm -hmm. A woman needs to know that her efforts were appreciated. Mm -hmm. Different. Yes. So yeah, a man is dependent on a woman, mm -hmm. which is why we keep getting married, <laughs> despite all the bad news. Correct. Because we do need that. Mm -hmm. So any, any suggestion that you accomplished something will make a man feel like a million bucks. It doesn't, here's, the, here's where the trick is, it doesn't mean you are special. Mm -hmm. It means what you did was effective. Mm -hmm. So a man should be really humble. I am nothing yet, but I can accomplish something. Mm -hmm. If I am validated in my accomplishment, that's mm -hmm. all I need. I, you don't need to tell me that I'm the smartest, I'm the highest. The best. It doesn't work. Mm -hmm. Because if you're the smartest one in class, but you've done nothing with it, you're a total loser. Mm -hmm. So I need to know that what I'm doing is valuable. The rest I don't need. So the ego, male ego, is very delicate. Mm -hmm. Because he already thinks of himself as nothing. Mm -hmm. And I don't need to be reminded, thank you very much. Yes. <laughs> right? yes. But when we don't understand this, mm -hmm. then we go crazy trying to be macho and, mm -hmm. and I'm the strongest and I'm the biggest and I'm the... You don't need to be, you need to do. Mm -hmm. Leave the being to so, the women. Right. And so here's the, here's the challenge with that. Due to male fragility, there's also a void that can never be filled. It's like the more you give, the more they want. It's enough is never enough. So if you tell me I'm good, the man is never satisfied with that. That's a blessing. <laughs> well, He'll never stop doing good. Well, for the woman, it is bad because there's never enough that she can do. So for him... It's, I need more and more and more external validation. That's when he becomes needy, right. when he stops being the giver mm -hmm. and starts acting like a receiver, mm -hmm. which doesn't work because right. he's not built that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that, that that's when he's not being a male. Mm -hmm. When he's being a healthy male, let me get that real definition. Yeah. One of the things God said to Eve mm -hmm. after they ate from the tree of knowledge, uh -huh. You will yearn for your husband. Mm -hmm. That was supposed to be like a punishment. It was. <laughs> <laughs> you will yearn for your husband, which means you're needy, dependent. Mm -hmm. They both committed the same sin. Mm -hmm. Why doesn't it work both ways? Mm -hmm. She'll be needy and have to you know, yearn for a husband, mm -hmm. and he'll be needy and yearn for a wife. Mm -hmm. it's the same sin should be the same punishment. Mm -hmm. It's not a punishment. It's a description of nature. A woman's nature is that she's a nurturer. Mm -hmm. But you got to have something to nurture. The planet, the animals, the... the... Right. Yeah. 
give me and I will nurture. Mm -hmm. So when you don't give, mm -hmm. the nurturer waits, is hungry. Mm -hmm. The giver doesn't get hungry. He's not waiting. He needs to be proactive mm -hmm. and start the process that can be nurtured. Mm -hmm. So a healthy male is a giver. Mm -hmm. A giver means I feel your need. So if women don't have a need, men don't exist. Mm -hmm. Correct. Huh? Correct. So mm -hmm. the definition of a man is that he gives mm -hmm. what is needed. Mm -hmm. And to do that, you need two talents. Mm -hmm. Number one, you have to be sensitive to the need. Mm -hmm. and, and we are. When we're needed, we become heroic. And you know what? I think that that's the development of a man. Because manhood is not something that is easily accomplished. In order to become a man, the male has to distance himself very far away from male nature. Because that is what makes that male become a man. So what is he distancing himself from? Because to be a man is to provide, to be of value, which is a service to the environment or to the economy. To the need. To the need. But he has to get there through the development of a man. So male goes to man. So if man is distancing, distancing yourself far away from male nature to become this value add, what actually is he distancing himself from? Based on my observation, the male is distancing himself from the nature of consumerism. Instead of being a consumer, he becomes a producer. If you put a stake in front of a pack of wolves, they're going to fight and compete, form a dominance hierarchy, hoard that, eat what they can eat, and then leave the scraps for everybody else. The process of a leader, you have to train the leader to be selfless and make sure everybody else eats before you eat. The nature of self-preservation is hoarding and consuming, and that is the nature of the male. The male is not biologically a producer, he's biologically a consumer and has to be trained and developed to get to a productive mentality, which would be man. <laughs> <laughs> I think this this greediness uh -huh. is both male and female. <laughs> Just, we do it a little differently. <laughs> the thing that men have to distance themselves from, mm -hmm. I think you said it earlier, mm -hmm. from their mother. Mm -hmm. Stop being the receiver, mm -hmm. become the giver, because mm -hmm. that's your nature. Mm -hmm. Mother spoiling you is not your nature. <laughs> <laughs> it's her nature. It's her nature. It's her, it's her nature. Right. And so yeah. that's why, interestingly, God says to Adam, therefore should a man leave his mother and father mm -hmm. and cleave to his wife. Mm -hmm. You got to get past childhood, mm -hmm. literally, mm -hmm. to become a man. Mm -hmm. I don't know if women have that problem. Well, the man has to stop depending on the mother because the mother is, right. his, his, that's her nature to, to nurture right. and coddle. So therefore a man must leave mother and father mm -hmm. because with a mother and father, you cannot become one. Mm -hmm. You're number three, mm -hmm. not number one. <laughs> Only with a husband and wife mm -hmm. are you number one mm -hmm. and become one with each other. Mm -hmm. There's a, there's a real intimacy there. Mm -hmm. So the society we live in, mm -hmm. without blaming anybody, right. does not encourage male or female identities. Because to be the CEO of a large corporation, mm -hmm. is that male or female? That's that's just a dominance position. It's uh, not male and it's not right. female. Yeah, it's just a dominance so position. So you're not more of a man if you're the head of the company. Right. And if you become the more the head of the company as a woman, you're not more of a woman. Right. It's really, really interesting. Mm -hmm. The all the events in history, mm -hmm. superficially look, all the events of history are male dominated. Mm -hmm. 
But the fact that there is history right. is all due to women. Right. While men were fighting and killing each other, mm -hmm. women were having babies and keeping us alive. Mm -hmm. So the only reason men get more attention mm -hmm. is because what they do is not the natural right. fighting a war. Right. They're doing something unusual. Mm -hmm. When you do something that is completely natural, nobody notices. Right. It's like, you you were breathing all day? Well, good. good right. That's well, normal. <laughs> right. <laughs> but if we didn't breathe, mm -hmm. so a real healthy man mm -hmm. is a man who feels the other's need and his greatest pleasure is to provide it. Mm -hmm. He also has to have the confidence that he can provide. Mm -hmm. There are men who see a woman's need, but... <laughs> Can't help you. Right. I, got, I got nothing to offer. Mm -hmm. And then there are men who think they have something to offer, to offer, and they don't care whether you want it or not. Mm -hmm. Those are the rapists. Mm -hmm. right? Right. So here's what happens. Men viewing pornography. Mm -hmm. They become emasculated. Mm -hmm. They become dysfunctional because they're asking for the pornography mm -hmm. to give them sexual pleasure. Mm -hmm. But that's going the wrong direction. Mm -hmm. The only real pleasure they will get is if they can give pleasure. Mm -hmm. Asking to receive pleasure destroys the masculine nature. How many men in marriage, if without marriage, give me pleasure, make me feel good? Always. Always. That's not masculine. But they don't. They don't know it. That's right. Right. It, and it's and it's the easier way. Right, <laughs> right. That, I'm going to do nothing, then you give me pleasure. Right. So if women allow it, men will become feminine. Mm -hmm. Because And then women will hate them for it. Yeah. Nature is the path of least resistance. And um, it's partic particularly for men. Yes. <laughs> if I don't have to. Right? They, they're not. So, uh, and it's always said a man will only do what you allow him to do. Or and what you expect. Right. And so if you allow him to be nothing and he can still be rewarded for it, yeah. why do anything? And so this is where the issue comes in to play because women for a long time have been conditioned to take care of the needs of a man. This is the, your, your job is to take care of him. Well, if that's how society is set up, the man has never had, never had to do anything. And the only way you can get a man to do something is to withdraw reward and keep it within a reachable distance. Not so far that it's like, that's too much. I'm not even going to put any effort. It has to be enough where he feels like if I do put the effort in, I can reach this. So one good example for that. Yes. I do a lot of marriage counseling. Uh -huh. This woman is saying, they were sitting right here. And this woman was saying, he never does anything. Mm -hmm. I've had it with him. He never does anything. Mm -hmm. Well, that's pretty extreme. Mm -hmm. He says... She's crazy. She's crazy. Mm -hmm. There is nothing you ever asked for that I didn't do. Mm -hmm. She says, no, you don't do anything. What, what's going on here? Right. What am I missing here? Right? Mm -hmm. So it turns out what she meant was you never do anything unless I ask. Right. Well, what's wrong with that? Mm -hmm. I ask and I'll do it. Mm -hmm. That's feminine. Mm -hmm. You're just responding right. instead of leading. Mm -hmm. So she's upset that he does everything she asks. <laughs> yes. right? mm -hmm. it's like, anyway, interestingly, at the end of this conversation, she says, you know what? I'm finished. Mm -hmm. I've had it. I can't do this anymore. Let's just get divorced. Mm -hmm. He says, if that's what you want, then I'll give you a divorce. <laughs> And he does it again. He does it. <laughs> and she turns to me and she <laughs> says, you see? Yeah, he does it again. <laughs> yeah. So it's not that women do too much for men. Mm -hmm. They do the wrong things. Instead of nurturing what is good, they pinch hit for him. Mm -hmm. Oh, you don't want to do the bills? I'll do the bills. Mm -hmm. You don't want to take out the garbage? I'll take out the garbage. You mm -hmm. don't, don't do that. Oh, absolutely not. Um, 
like I said, I believe men have to earn marriage, right? They're not entitled to it because if they don't prove themselves worthy of standing on their own, they're not going to be good partners. They're not. They're going to be totally dependent on the woman. A lot of men are. And looking. they're going to force the woman into a masculine role, mm -hmm. and then everybody hate. They hate themselves. They hate each other. Mm -hmm. and the whole thing is messed up. And and, and so the the thing about it is is that. And each and every last one of us, we both have masculine and feminine within us. No life can exist without those two principles. So um, women have more of, they have a more of a balanced side to this masculine and feminine thing. The male is really tipped on the physical level of masculine, uh, masculinity. And he believes that just his physical vessel is the only masculine part of him. What he hasn't realized is there is a thing of mental masculinity and mental femininity that men have typically access to mental masculine part of it. And they don't have that level of willpower and self-control to direct their energetic forces to a goal. That's, that's when it falls apart. Mm -hmm. right? But I'm trying to look at the ideal. Mm -hmm. If everything was normal, if, if we were normal, mm -hmm. what would we be? It's hard right. to imagine. Right. Like, can you imagine normal people? Well, so, we can go back to them, men fighting, <laughs> fighting while women were just taking care of things. What makes men fight each other? What makes them behave even if this capitalistic system was not um, here how would men behave just amongst themselves without women in the picture how would they if women were over there and the men saw them over there how would they behave with each other to get the attention of those women they would be completely frustrated and bored mm -hmm. <laughs> because they sense no need mm -hmm. and they're Entire existence is a response to a need. Mm -hmm. So we need each other, which is good. If we could identify that need mm -hmm. and apply ourselves to it, mm -hmm. we would both be very, very healthy. I, the only thing I think I halfway agree with you there. I, the, the, part, the part that we're diverging in is the need part where we because need creates a level of dependency because you have there's three levels there has to be there's dependency then there's independence and then there's interdependence the dependence part is where a person is totally needy and really leaning externally on other people there has to be a move to a level of inter of independence where you do become a value add. And then once you get to this value add where you know exactly what you bring to the table, then you can move to a level of interdependence where you can collaborate, right? Where two whole people actually put into a pot together. When I agree 100%. Yes. But you're working your way up. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to work my way down, <laughs> right? It's like, if you don't mess up, mm -hmm. you will be interdependent. Mm -hmm. Just don't mess up. <laughs> In other words, you're starting off healthy. Mm -hmm. Don't mess it up. Right. Instead of saying, oh, we're all messed up. How do we get back to normal? Well, that's more of a realistic thing. Because it is. We are in a we are in a system that breaks people, that yes. breaks everybody. And so Because our values mm -hmm. are neither male nor female. Our values money. Yes. That's not male or female. It's what what it is, is because everything is an energy, right? So it, whether it's male or female, it's either in a masculine or feminine energetic position. Mm -hmm. So if it's a man or a woman doing it. <laughs> well, no, no. Uh, because even, even like I said, with electronics, there's a masculine and feminine principle. That's not man or woman, but that is a masculine and feminine principle. Yeah, there. and they don't mess up. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. So with the human, there is a need for survival. Like the body, the body needs food, air, water. That's an absolute need for survival. The problem comes in with the male and 
in the male where the need for a woman is just about as high as the need for air and food and water. To be feminine. Yes. And so women don't have this need for man in the same category that men have a need for woman. Food, sex, sleep, water, all of these things, and then you throw a woman in there with that. The man does not exist at that capacity for women. So because of that imbalance in need, there's a lot of pressure put on the woman to perform a certain way for the male's fragile ego. And if the male never begins to strengthen his own ego to draw from within without having to depend on a woman, it's going to be a very difficult thing because especially with the shift in society, women are tired of men depending on men for everything. And and a lot of times women are doing everything, everything that they can and it's still not working. No amount of praise. If the man doesn't have a sense of independence within him, nothing that the woman does, no amount of praise, that's not going to work because he's still always going to be unhappy. Mark Twain said this. Um, No, it wasn't Mark Twain. It was Immanuel Kant. Immanuel Kant said, give a man everything he desires. And at that moment, everything is not everything. It's It's like a bottomless pit with a lot of men. And we have 8 billion people on the planet now. Half of those 8 billion are men. And if the default setting for men is fragile ego and the need for external validation while everybody is in a place of survival, somebody's not going to make it. Somebody ain't going to make it. And I I, I think he's not going to make it if he can't draw from within. Because we have to. So here's the secret. Mm -hmm. This is the punchline. Okay. This is like that. Yeah. This need for validation for a man, Mm -hmm. there's only one really good solution. Every man should admit and be comfortable with the fact that he's nothing. They should. You start off zero, Mm -hmm. and that's okay. Mm -hmm. Don't try to be something when you're nothing. Right. But this non insignificant creature Mm -hmm. can do the most significant things. He can. That's male. Mm-hmm. Male means I'm not the needy one. Mm-hmm. I provide for the needy. Mm-hmm. And I am still nothing. Mm-hmm. And that's okay. Mm-hmm. So I don't need compliments on my tombstone. Mm-hmm. I, need, I need to know that I created tombstones. Right. That, that I made a contribution. Mm-hmm. Not I became something. Right. The harder men try to be something, Mm -hmm. the more feminine they're going to become. Mm -hmm. I totally, I I totally agree with that. And you know what? That's a that's a major challenge that they would have to overcome because the ego, because they're not taught. Yeah, that yeah, and and who can teach them? Only a man, another man can teach them. A woman can't because only a man. Who has already made peace with Correct. the fact that he is nothing. That they, yes, that's the only one. And it's like many, a grandfather. Right. And right? how many of them are right. there? And who listens to a grandfather? Right. And so <laughs> herein lies the problem. It's an it's an eternal problem that can never be solved unless the male himself, because a woman can't do this work for him, he would have to wake up and say, you know what? I'm going to have to do things different. This is just the way it is. And in order for him to get to the this is the way it is, he would have to flex his critical thinking process and override the emotion that exists at the lower nature and the ego place. This is a very, very hard thing for a man to do. Especially when he's told to do the opposite. Yes. Become the best. Become great. Yes. No. Yes. No. Just do. do. That's it. Because imperfect people can do perfect things. Correct. Tiny people Mm -hmm. can do heroic things. So stop trying to be a giant. Look, all the the stories, Mm -hmm. children are raised on stories. Right. 
all the stories in the Bible, for example, nobody is becoming great. Mm -hmm. They're serving right. something great. Correct. Even even the in all the fairy tales, mm -hmm. the simple the sim the simpleton, the country bumpkin, yes. who is not a general and he's not a king, and he, but he does something for the king, mm -hmm. and he gets to marry the princess. Mm -hmm. That's how you become masculine. Mm -hmm. Don't try to be something. Do something for someone who is. Okay, let me ask you this question. Today, mm -hmm. all our heroes are super. Right? Mm -hmm. Wrong image. Mm -hmm. Tell me how the simple person can do something magnificent mm -hmm. for the important people. Mm -hmm. Don't make me the important person. Right. It doesn't work. We're not Superman. Right. And we shouldn't be. Mm -hmm. We should be very humble creatures. Yes. Knowing mm -hmm. that we have no extrin ex intrinsic, value. intrinsic absolute value. value. Correct. But what we do mm -hmm. is divine. I totally agree with that. And... Um, it's hard for a male to hear that. I know. It's very, and, and it it might land easier coming from you, but me being a woman, they're gonna crack, which they do all all over the um, uh, because I have videos out there that are pretty viral that say virtually the same thing. You know that the male doesn't have any any value. This is not to and this, doesn't need it. It doesn't. And but. Everything is feeding the male's ego in the society. And this is what creates narcissistic personality disorder because NPD is a disorder. In order to find out a disorder, you would have to first establish order. Right. Right. It's a disorder, it's a disorder. because it's unnatural. It's unnatural. And so what, what are we doing to create this disorder? Yeah. We're killing, we're, we're unnaturally inflating the male ego and he sees himself as something he's not so when you tell him at this point where he believes he's something he's not that he's nothing or he doesn't have intrinsic value this is when things go crazy but at some point the truth has to be established so that we can get back to a natural way of life right, right? and so this is very hard for men to hear Women have a responsibility to understand this because the woman cannot continue to give to masculinely. They, they can't con continue to give to the male in the way that they have been given because what they're giving is a lot of energy that makes the male function in a lazy way. He doesn't get up and do. And here's the, the tragic thing is this. The male has to sink or swim. He has to sink or swim. And nobody can actually save him. He can only save himself, right? He, men create great things with the use of muses, but they don't touch the muses. These are inspirational uh, figures for them to do wonderful things like art and things like that. But society has handicapped men to a great extent. And I think what is unfortunate about this entire thing is that during the handicapping process, they never set the male up to succeed in doing something. And now where they are is pulling the rug from under men and letting them fall on society in total confusion. And now where we are, women are pretty much getting up and walking away from playing the motherly role to men because the wife is not the wife. She's actually the mother. He loses his mother and she, he goes to a new mother, which is the woman, which makes it a everybody bad. Everybody crazy. It makes everybody crazy. And he's expecting his mother. And if you, I don't, I'm not certain if you listen to any of the Manosphere content. You had a gentleman who's passed along his name is Kevin Samuels. Then you have Andrew Tate, uh, which is a very uh, volatile character that is radicalizing young men who feel like they can't find their way. Because the whole 
idea is women are not taking care of them the way they should. And that, that's, the, that's the entire thing. And women are at the point where they can't, they don't want to do this anymore. So men are finding themselves in a very peculiar situation where they don't have the skills to do it. They don't have the desires to do it. And now the crutch that they've leaned on so long is like, adios, we don't want you because you're what? Nothing. They're being reminded that they're nothing, even though you have people telling them that they're everything. The TV is telling you you're everything. The music is telling your greatest athletes or role models. They, you look up to them and it looks like they're everything and you aspire to be that. And somewhere along the line, you delude yourself into believing that you are that. That's right. <laughs> so here, yeah. when you say telling men that they're great and that they're building their male ego. Correct. That's not male ego. <laughs> what is it? It's not male. Mm -hmm. To tell them you're perfect, you're great, you're right. smart. That's not male. It's not male. No, right. right, because that's not even the that's not the nature or the existence of an actual male exactly in, right. in nature, right? Exactly right? And so they have been blown into a completely unnatural identity right. and they are trying to force through their physical will to bring about this fairy tale that they've been living in. Yeah. And this has done a major detriment to everybody. So children, mm -hmm. we know, because we're very smart, mm -hmm. we know that we should never say to a child who does something really bad, mm -hmm. we should never say you're a bad boy. No. What you did was bad. Yes. That's like psychology 101. Yes. <laughs> never say you're, you're bad. Right. Say that was wrong. Mm -hmm. That was bad. Yeah. Good. Okay. But then when the child does something very, very positive and good, mm -hmm. we don't say that was good. Right. We say you're an angel. You're mm -hmm. so good. Mm -hmm. You're such a... Don't do that. Correct. To boys. Correct. To boys. And I try to tell Always them. focus on the act, act. the accomplishment, mm -hmm. what's good about what they did. Did, yes. Don't build an ego that is not even masculine. Correct. Correct. I totally, I totally agree with that. Um, I've told women this uh, a few times that when you see a man do something that is good, you have to acknowledge that, right? And so I'll give you an example because earlier you said that the bad thing that's happening is people view content and they say, oh, you're taking this side or you're taking that side. They're not actually viewing the whole truth. Um, there was a video of, a, of, a, of an incel, involuntary celibate, who found an outlet to speak to others who were in his position. He, would, he was not talking to women. He did not make this video for women. I got a hold of the video and I listened to what he was saying and I wanted to give my commentary on that video. The two things that I noticed about that video within the four, first 14 seconds is number one, this guy has a job. Number two, he has found an outlet to express his emotions about what situation he's in while still governing himself to function in society without doing bad things to people. And based on what I know about men and their difficulties in communicating, their difficulties in, in expressing their emotions, I felt that that was a, a good thing to be done to find an outlet of self-expression while still contributing or doing something like having a job. Because a lot of involuntary celibates, they're not doing anything but sitting in their mom's basement playing video games and being angry at the world without even expressing healthily where they are. And we have some people who are upset and find that it's necessary to kick people when they're down. I don't believe in kicking people when they're down. I don't believe in not acknowledging when people do things that are conducive, but not just for self, but as the overall whole, because the the world that we're living in is ra rapidly declining and putting everybody in a very bad position. When you see something, see somebody doing something good, acknowledge it, 
as quick as we are to acknowledge when people do bad things. We have to <laughs> acknowledge when people do good things. And that, you're correct, acknowledging when people do good things is not feeding the ego. When you tell people you're this, you're that, you're special, that does blow a person's ego so far out because it's never about the self. When you're really living spiritually, it's never about you. It's about what you can do for others. It is about the value that you add to the planet and the community. And it doesn't matter if it's male or female. It's really about what you do to help sustain and nurture life and function together. Ego is the biggest problem in this world. And that's where religion goes bad. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because religion is supposed to satisfy you. Correct. Yes. No, it's not. Right. It's supposed to tell you how you can serve the creator. Correct. So that the creator is satisfied. Mm -hmm. And that's your pleasure. Mm -hmm. The pleasure of serving, mm -hmm. not the pleasure of taking. Correct. And, here's and that's the, both male and female. That is both male and female. And, but here's the, here's the biggest reason why people can't grasp that is because the servitude to God has been tainted. There is a, give me, give me, give yes, me. Yes, it's an alternate God that's not the true God because the true God that you would be serving, that God put everything inside of you that you needed to express, to actually be that value add. And when you're living your true authentic self, you are serving God because your true authentic self is adding value to the planet and others. Most people are going to churches and they're just giving up all of their resources to a pastor and they're being told, this is how you're serving God. That's not God that you're serving. You doing what some man wants you to do is not actually serving God because you're looking externally for this God when everything that you needed to be to serve the true divine creator is within you. The moment that you start looking outside of yourself, you're off the path. Well, if you're serving God in order to have a seat in heaven, mm -hmm. you're not serving him, you're buying a seat in heaven. Correct. I agree. It's just a purchase. Yes. <laughs> you're not serving him. Correct. And that's, if you really want to go back to where did all this begin? Mm -hmm. It all began when people started preaching, mm -hmm. you are so dependent on God. Right. God is perfect and you're in trouble. Right. That's the beginning of the end. Yes. I am not in trouble. I'm just a human being. Right. God needs something. Right. And if I can do it for him, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm wonderful. Mm -hmm. But religion has turned it around. Mm -hmm. God doesn't need anything. You need everything. Mm -hmm. right. So get on your knees and beg. Yeah. Right. Is, right. is... And then who who is it that we're actually begging to, which has never been told. It's been a it's been a mask put over the true creator's head, right? There have been principles of the divine that have been taken and flipped out of context. Lies have been told on top of who it. Do you, who do you pray to when you're needy? <laughs> Whoever will answer. Right. <laughs> you're not particular. Right. And that's where idolatry comes in. Correct. Well, maybe that idol will give me what right. I need. Yeah. But if you're trying to serve the one who created you, because mm -hmm. he created you <laughs> out of a need, mm -hmm. so you are the needed one, mm -hmm. not the needy one, mm -hmm. you could have a beautiful life, a beautiful planet. It, the world can be what God needs. Mm -hmm. Can't get better than that. Correct. So we got to stop this neediness. Mm -hmm. I don't need to even be born. I agree. So how did I become the needy one? Right. God, on the other hand, created the whole universe and he needs nothing. How does that make any sense? Right. So because we've been taken out of a natural creative process and we have been forced into a production line of creativity, um, humans are being bred like 
cattle. And they're just being brought here. And I believe that a lot of it is against the will of people. And they're being here, being brought here, and thrown to the wolves. How is this this gender dysphoria? Yeah, th- yeah. What the heck is that? A total confusion. I mean, we're so far away from truth. Which begins mm-hmm. in the theory of, of evolution. Mm-hmm. You evolved. Mm-hmm. Who says you have to be male? Who says you have to be female? Right. It's just an accident. Right. So fix it. Right. But if God created you male, mm-hmm. then that's, that's what, what you, you are. Yes. And you can't not be that. And you can't fail at it. Correct. So the problem comes because humans need time to adapt. It takes a lot of time to develop a soul to on its journey. And this is not a fly-by-night process. When you produce so many people on the planet, because it took 200 years to go from 1 billion to like 8 billion people on the planet, but it took 300,000 years to go from 4 million to 1 billion. So people have not had time to adapt to this artificial environment. And the male needs time to adapt within himself. If he doesn't have that time, he's going to be trapped in the lower nature of need, scarcity, and all of this stuff. But we've already covered that. Mm-hmm. If men and women were separate, mm-hmm. they would develop fine. Right. They <laughs> would. <laughs> so it's not it's not that they need time to develop. Stop corrupting them. Right. Stop putting them in the same environment. But now, where do they go? How do we separate the environment? Because there's so many people and we can't build on all the land that's here. We can't destroy the animals' natural habitat for us to take over. You know. I am not worried about nature. Nature is powerful. Yes. I'm worried about us. Yes. <laughs> like, what are we doing to ourselves? Yes. And I think if we just stop ruining things, right? we would naturally be much better than we are. Right. So it's not that goodness is unnatural. Right. It's not. Mm-hmm. Goodness is the most natural of all things. Mm-hmm. But when you get greedy, you distort everything. Mm-hmm. So... When people hear the truth, yes. most people, right. it just bingo. Mm-hmm. The light goes on and everything makes sense and yes. they're back into the saddle. Mm-hmm. It doesn't have to take a long time. Right, it doesn't. But stop feeding them poison. Correct, correct. And they have to stop wanting the poison because they're addicted to the poison. Yeah, well, that's we did that to them. Yeah, we did. We did. Um, every commercial. Every commercial. Everything. You deserve. Mm-hmm. What? Mm-hmm. What did I do to right. deserve? Because feeding a spirit of consumerism it right. makes you dependent, dependent. and needy mm-hmm. when you're not. Right. Because we're supposed to be producers. We have been producing. But the people who understand necessity is the mother of invention. All of your creators are people who need something. So there has been a systematic effort to keep people in need so that they continue to produce what can be capitalized on. So this, therein lies the problem. They produce and we trick them into consuming what we trick them into believing that we produce. We take their creative ideas and then we sell it back to them under some formula that they need to cope in this dysfunctional society <laughs> that we've created. So here, here's my solution. Uh-huh. The Jewish solution. Okay. The need that motivates all our is not our need. Right. It's the creator's need. Mm-hmm. Yes. Focus on the creator's need. Mm-hmm. It will motivate you. Right. It will produce good results mm-hmm. and it won't feed the 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 lowest form of ego right. that is neither male nor female, mm-hmm. that is neither good nor healthy. Mm-hmm. So I guess what we boil down to now, uh-huh. if you're not focused on morality, you're not going to be healthy. Correct. Not you're not going to be a saint. Right. <laughs> you're not going to be sane. Right. <laughs> Correct. Morality and sanity, mm-hmm. they're inseparable. Okay. I believe that men specifically absolutely need religion. They need to 
be trained. They need to be under some doctrine. They need a guide. But not the religion not the, that not tells this, them no, not the, Yeah, No, not that religion. True religion. True religion. Which that, means God. Which is God, right? right? Yeah. The true religion, which they don't know what that means, but they would have to be taught those based on universal principles that are unchanging. The religions that they are part of, they stand on no principle. And if they do have any principle, it has been distorted and redirected into a... I'm speaking to a minister. Uh-huh. He says... Do you believe in the Savior? I said, actually, I'm not looking to be saved by God. Right. I want to serve God, right. not have him serve me. Right. The man started to cry. He says, I never thought of that. Right. God exists to help me? Mm-hmm. How does that make any sense? Mm-hmm. We're here to serve him. Mm-hmm. That solves all. of your problems. Mm -hmm. Am I getting? Am I having? Am I happy? Mm -hmm. Drop it. Which means that a person... Are you serving God? That's all. That's all you need to worry about. The only challenge is, is that the person has to come out of their lower nature because the nature of humans, as soon as we're born... Is because we need and we're trying to fulfill our needs. So instantly, and that's childish. Right, and that's childish. And so, so grow up. So nobody has actually been taught how what it means up. to yes. grow up and how to be men and women. They haven't. And yeah. so they're all in an infantile state. And it's unfortunate because once you get to a certain level, it's, it becomes hard to reteach or train a person. So this has to be instilled very young. Exactly. And if you don't instill it, well, who's the first teacher of the child? The mother's the first teacher of the child. So depending on if it's a male or female child, the education process has to change after a certain age, right? The mother nurtures, but for a boy child, that boy child has to be in the presence of a man who knows this because if he is not, (laughs) right? Or a grandmother. Or or a grandmother. Grandmothers are so powerful. Yes, they are. They're so much more powerful than a mother. They are. They're, they're They're more respected. They are more knowledgeable, more wise, right? And this is throughout the ages it has always been the grandmother even even in nature who carried the wisdom because wisdom is the true teacher wisdom is everything and i don't think that we value grandmothers we we don't we we criticize there's age ageism old-fashioned and and so we're valuing youth the reason that society values youth is because of the need to suck the life out of the youth we don't value they the spend more money they spend more money <laughs> they're more reckless they yeah. go to jail we can get we can get uh higher insurance rates out of them due to their ignorance and their impulsivity that there, there is a need to feed off of the youthful energy the life force energy that's concentrated in the youth and so we devalue the elders who actually know how to get through in this world <laughs> Yes. So our bottom line is, yes. from all of our conversation, yes. listen to your grandmother. Yes, listen to your grandmother. <laughs> really? Yes. That's what it boils down yes. to. Yes. And we just have to stop damaging people. And, you know, <laughs> it's, it's so bad because the damaged don't know that they're damaged. And so they have a repetitive cycle where they keep reproducing the same problem. And so, so when people say, so what should I do? What should I do? Listen to your grandma. It, it, the solution is not far away. Right. <laughs> it really is. If everyone listened to their grandmother, mm-hmm. we would have an ideal society. Well, yes and no. As long as the grandmother is not completely delusional and giving you bad <laughs> information. <laughs> or suffering from Alzheimer's. Oh, suffering. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We have to consider that too. Yeah. Yes, indeed. But that's really. I want to help society figure this thing. You out. are helping society. Yes. But when you help society, and I think this is really, really important, you have this gardener mm-hmm. yes. who loves plants and flowers yes. and beauty and yes. really talented, can't stand that neglected piece of right. lawn or, or yard. 
So he just goes in there and he cleans it up and he pretties it up and he plans it. And then suddenly some guy comes over and hands him a check. Mm -hmm. He says, what is this? Right. He says, well, that piece of property you just made beautiful, it's my land. Yes. So I owe you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. We're all making God's garden yes. more beautiful yes. with everything we do. Yes. Whoever invented the bread slicer. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> whoever invented the electric toothbrush. Right. You're making God's garden livable. Yes. Better. Yes. You don't realize it. Right. You think you're just going to a boring job. Mm -hmm. But even if you work in a company and you're at the bottom of the heap, all you do is send out the package. Yes. In the in the you know shipping department, but what you do is valuable. To whom? Mm -hmm. That's the thing. Yes. You think you're making the yard nice? No, you know you're it. satisfying the owner's desire. Mm -hmm. You're serving God with everything you do. Yes. But you just focused on whether you're making mm -hmm. enough money. Why? Why do you have to go to work all the time? It's boring. Mm -hmm. We're actually fixing the world or serving society. Yes. You're serving God Correct. because whose society is it? You're right. It's God's society. Whose planet are we fixing here? Correct. So don't underestimate yes. the, the gift and, and, and the significance of what you're doing. Yes, sir. You say, you know, we started off saying this is life saving. Yes. Who cares? Right. God cares. Yes. That's what cares. Whose life are you saving? Right. The life that God created. Correct. So you're serving him. Mm -hmm. We have to maintain. Yeah. We have to maintain and do our part. And then our ego can fall away. We don't need it. Right. We don't need it. No, we don't. No, we don't. And it's so much better to not be needy. Yes. I agree. I totally agree. It is so depressing. Yes. We're all messed up. The world is messed up. Right. See what you can do. Make the best of it. Yes. What a depressing picture. Right. The world is not messed up. Mm -hmm. The world is great. Mm -hmm. And what God wants from his world is perfect. Mm -hmm. And you can do it. And you're doing it every day. Yes. So just open your eyes and stop torturing yourself. Right. But I need, but I don't have. But right. don't, don't, don't be miserable for nothing. Right. There's no need. Yeah. Mm -hmm. serve God with joy means mm -hmm. if you're serving yourself there will be no joy right. but if you're serving God because right. you're not needy right. you're needed right. of course you're going to be happy right. mm -hmm. it's not that complicated no I totally agree I totally agree that it's not that complicated as long as we can disconnect from all of the stuff that we've been told. Because right. it, all of this stuff leads you away and from And we would be that. so glad to disconnect from it. Yes. Because it's so distasteful on your parents. Wake up in the morning and say, what can I do for God? Mm -hmm. That he really needs. Right. Otherwise, you're just a pest. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. So don't be God's pest. Mm -hmm. Do what he really needs. Right. What does he really need? Read the Ten Commandments. Mm-hmm. It's all there. Yes. So, go for it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, I have thoroughly enjoyed speaking with you, and I think our audience is going to love this. No, we didn't disagree enough, but... <laughs> well, it's it's not so much about disagreeing. It's really about, is it the truth or not? Yes. Yes. That's it. So, thank you so much for taking our time to meet with me. I surely appreciate it. I think... God is pleased. I do too. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Well, it's been great. Make sure you tune in to the High Power Podcast. Get the book, 41 Shades of Men, The Pursuit to Subdue and Use You. Also get the five components of love and check out the conference that we have coming up here at June 8th. It's a very powerful conference. So make sure you get your tickets. Check out that information in the description. I'll see you soon. Have a great day. I can turn my head around now. <laughs> Thank you.